You know, my shoulder is killing me. And I remember the good old days where when I got shoulder injuries and stuff, it was from valid things like doing something stupid, like overhead pressing several hundred pounds with bad form or doing some stupid stunt that caused me to fall and hurt myself. These days, I, I think I did this podcasting. It's the, only thing, it's the only thing I've done. Maybe repositioning myself in the chair or something. Maybe, I don't know, man. Getting old is a son of a bitch. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode. Glad to see all of your smiling faces. You know, why do all of us YouTube guys say that? You know, we all say that, glad to see you. We don't see you. I don't see shit except for this camera lens. So I don't, I don't know, I don't know why we say that. But nevertheless, I I'm happy that you guys are all back for another video. <laughs> Today, we are gonna be talking about wallets. These two wallets are actually you just here for comparison's sake. The stars of the show are these two guys. And I did briefly talk about these in the recent video I did, my summer EDC update. If you've not seen that video, definitely actually over here, go check, I'll link it up here, go check that video out. Even though I spoke about these in that video, I love these so much, I felt like they deserved their very own video so we could dive a little deeper into the awesomeness of these wallets from Dasa Fenimir. Dasafenimir. And by the way, I'm saying it correctly. I know. I'm the king of just completely fucking up pronunciations. Michael actually commented on my EDC video and said that I pronounced Dasafenimir properly. How about that shit? I pronounced something right. Now, that being said, I'm about to totally botch several other things because this one is called the Hubei. Hoibei? Hubei? I, I'm probably killing that. I'm gonna go with Hubei. Pretty sure I'm screwing that up. And the leather this is made of looks like Buttero Butero. I think it's Butero. Point is, I might have Dasafenimir. See, I fucked that up. <laughs> Point is, I might have Dasafenimir right, but no worries. If you're on this channel, you're certainly still gonna get some mispronunciations. Fret not. So these two wallets, really awesome company, ran by a really awesome guy named Michael Bluth, who is an active US Navy guy. This is kind of his side hustle. He makes these wallets. Really cool dude. By the way, follow him on Instagram. He has a cool Instagram. He gives updates and has pictures of all his stuff on there. But I saw him the other day. He was doing a workout. Dude is jacked. Michael, good job on that, son. Keeping fit. I like it. Dude Dude is swole. Don't piss him off because he'll probably whoop your ass. He's in the Navy and he's swole. So just saying. <laughs> Super nice guy. I always like to support the military and he is a small maker in a world of, you know, big box stores and Amazon. And hey, look, I'm not throwing any stones. I get an Amazon box to my house just about every damn day. I buy a ton of shit on Amazon. Nevertheless, in a world of big box stores, Walmarts, Amazons and all this stuff. It is nice to be able to support a small maker uh, when you can, and especially a guy who's an active military serviceman. So really cool. And these are all handmade, hand cut, hand stitched, the whole kit and caboodle, hand stamped, all made by hand. The two we have for your viewing pleasure today are the Hubei and the Top Sider. Michael has a ton of other wallets. So if these aren't your fancy, visit Michael's website, check out his other stuff, because he offers a ton. Real popular ones that I see a lot of people have is the gun deck, the Hubei, the top side of the gun deck. If you notice, uh, he's a Navy guy, so all of his wallets are naval inspired names. Ton of different designs, so if these don't float your boat. <laughs> see what I did there? <laughs> we are laughing. <laughs> Navy, float. Yeah, I'm sorry, it gets bad around here sometimes, guys, you should be used to that shit by now. I actually had a guy say that the other day. I did a that's what she said joke, and he's like, really? Those jokes have been out for 20 years. I'm like, dude, that's what's so damn funny about it. If you don't get 16-year-old humor, then you probably just need to carry on. You're not gonna really enjoy this channel very much. Back on track, Jeremy, stay focused. Shit, here we go. Okay, so let's start off with this guy here, the top sider. I will point out that you might notice these wallets look identical because they are extremely similar. Exact same dimensions. Both of these wallets are four inches tall by three and a quarter inches wide. Same size, same footprint, all that happy horse shit. So digging into this guy, the top sider. I love the design of these wallets, right? The way these work is there's a little flap here. You get it, you open this flap up, and 
You've got a place for some cards in here. The thing that sold me on this particular wallet is this slot here that holds some cash unfolded. Almost all wallets, minimal front pocket style wallets, because by the way, obviously, and we'll get into that, these are intended for front pocket carry. Not that you couldn't carry them in your back pocket, but they're small, thin, and minimal so that you can front pocket carry, which is my preference. All these other kind of wallets that I carry and recommend, still recommend these kind, by the way, your money has to be folded up and stashed. This one's got a little clip on the back. This one's got an elastic uh, band here that holds some cash, which is fine. I don't carry a ton of cash, so that works out just fine. But I do love the fact that this wallet has a place where you can carry bills completely unfolded and whole. So when you open it up, your money's just here and you can get through there, get out whatever you need, pull it out, pay for your stuff and move on with your day. And then it's, you know, got a nice little pocket here for some cards. Also, this is one piece of leather, one piece of leather that is folded into this design and has one row of stitching right here, which by the way, his stitching is, when I say stitching, don't think thread because this shit is diesel. I don't know, it's some heavy duty stuff. I don't think you ever have to worry about this thing wearing out, but it's all one piece. This thing will probably be around well after I'm on the other side of the dirt. Easy access to your cards. You're gonna be able to fit, I think Michael says on this one, hold on, I wrote it down in my notes, along with bad shoulder, bad eyes when you get my age. He's saying uh, about six cards and 25 bills, which I don't doubt that. Most people aren't gonna be carrying that amount. I've got four cards in here right now and you know maybe four or five bills. Super comfortable, keeps it nice and thin, minimal. This is American currency, it's just good old American greenbacks. They fit down in here with no problem whatsoever, with plenty of room. I don't have any euros or any other currency to check width wise. If this wasn't wide enough to fit it in whole, you could still obviously just fold your cash up and stick it in the back. But with American cash, and I'm pretty sure Canadian is, is pretty much the same size, you can slip whole bills down in there and then you got your nice little pocket right here in the front for your cards and done. Most of the leather I see on his website is Butero, but this is Shell Cordovan. I don't see the option on the website for that, so maybe if you, you shoot him a, a email or something and ask. Shell Cordovan, Italian leather, Butero, also Italian leather, both really awesome products. You wanna be able to pick option-wise the color of your leather. He has many colors, and then you can select the color of your threading. And this guy comes in at about 59 bucks. And they say, Jeremy, that's fantastic, but I want some more slots. I want some more places to put some stuff. Well, that's where you go into your Hubei. The Hubei is basically the exact same thing as the Top Sider, except for it is a two-piece design. And what that allows for is in this guy, you have one, two, three internal pockets and a quick access around back. So how you set this guy up, same basic wallet, You've got your slot in the back here that you can slip whole cash down in like such. Then this one, because you have more pockets, you can organize your stuff a little bit if you like. And then maybe something quick access. This is obviously an Amazon gift card because I don't want to show you guys my personal information on the internet and everybody use my credit card to buy shit. You have a quick access spot here in the back. So maybe put your debit card or something that you need access to readily and often right back there. So then you don't even have to open your wallet. You can just pull out your pocket, get your card, Boom, done. So a lot of you guys might prefer that over this. Because this is two pieces of leather, you can pick two different leather colors, right? Say your favorite team colors were red and black or whatnot, you can do a red and black combo. Point is, you can really customize these guys to whatever you want. Now this one, he is saying that this one will hold, gotta write my notes again, around six cards and around 20 bills, again, I'm sure you can hold at least that many. For most of you guys that are minimalist and you're carrying the stuff front pocket, you're gonna have probably no more than four or five cards and you know maybe 10 bills, which is gonna fit extremely easily in this guy. This one is two piece, so it is a tad thicker than the top sider, but I mean, we're talking minimal. That one extra piece of leather wrapped around there is not changing the thickness factor by a ton. Just to show you for comparison's sake, so this is a Travax Armored Summit, very popular wallet. I've actually recommended it, love this thing, still carry it. Just for size comparison, you see what you're looking at footprint wise. And then this is a Ridge wallet, another wallet that I carry myself, I've recommended to you guys, just so you see comparison wise. These are gonna be a little bit bigger. So they are a little bit bigger footprint. If you're going for 
absolute smallest footprint possible, obviously these guys are gonna win. But thickness wise, you're, you're looking at basically the same. Both super, super slim, so they disappear really nicely in your pocket. He has really done a great job at keeping these super minimal and thin so they fit in your pocket very nicely. The one thing I will say about the extra width, when you get these guys loaded up with some cards, there is some wiggle room. What that does is it keeps a little bit of flexibility in the wallet. It keeps it nice and soft and supple to where when it's down in your pocket, after you carry this thing for a while, and it's gonna conform to your body, it's gonna stay nice and soft. And you know, that's one of the things, and I know historically speaking, I've always recommended these style wallets because I love them and I still do. And I'll still feature these on future videos because I still put these in and out of my rotation. But these do feel nice in your pocket. They're thin. The leather feels nice, it's soft, they conform to your body. And if you guys have been watching my channel for any length of time, the one thing these do over any of these style of wallets, these things patina. I'm not gonna sit here and creepily sniff this wallet. I love the smell of leather. Now the Travax Contour does have some leather the patinas, which I absolutely love about that wallet and the Contour is one of my favorite wallets. But this is a whole big hunk of leather. More leather, more patina, just saying. If you're like me and you love patina, that's gonna be a attractive kind of thing. These are just, they got a little bit more, they're a little more classy, right? You're talking about an Italian leather handmade wallet. It's just a little more, more gentlemanly like. These are a little more tactical. They're a little more um, rugged. I don't know if I'd even the word rugged, right? Because I mean, these are plenty rugged. There's got this whole hand stitched vibe going on. These are just a little more refined. Look, you're talking about a guy with a bunch of tattoos and a big old beard wears a baseball caps trying to talk to you about class. So just but bear with me for a second here, okay? <laughs> Save the neck for me, Clark. <laughs> Say you're going out somewhere nice with your significant other, you're going to a wedding or whatnot. You got on a nice suit, you got on a tie, you got some cufflinks on, you got your nice watch on, you got your hair all slicked down and looking dapper. I don't want pop, damn it. I'm a dapper Dan man. You pull a handmade Italian leather wallet out your pocket. I don't know, it just feels a little different. It says a little something different than something that's metal with nylon webbing. Right? It's just a, it's a little different thing. It's all I'm saying. There's a time and a place for these. There's just something about a handmade leather wallet. I'm just saying, it's just kind of awesome. I think I'm gonna start going natural on all my leather stuff that I order from now on. You know, you start off with this color and it kind of works through all the different browns, right? So yeah, you start out with natural, but then this thing's gonna get darker and darker into almost like what I think is a, a bourbon or a whiskey, I think is the color of the leather he has on his side. It gets a little darker brown. And then, you know, eventually it's even gonna get to where the edges and some of the stuff get super, super dark into like a darker brown. You get this variation in color that just, it just looks great. I like the fact that there's a process and it's gonna darken with age and you're gonna get to have it through all those different levels of darkness as it patinas and ages. I just think that's a kind of a cool thing to do. Just a quick note on upkeep that I talked to Michael cause I was wanted to give you guys the information. I asked him what he recommended for oils and or cleaners for these things. He said that he in general, finds that you don't need to oil or condition leather wallets because your oils from your hands because you're constantly touching these things, it generally keeps them nice and soft and supple. If you do find that it's drying out or something, he recommended Neat's Foot Oil or Saddle Soap. After he said that, I did a little research on Neat's Foot Oil. When you get natural leather, it is like the color of skin, right? It's very, very light. If you want to kickstart the patina process and get it past that ultra, ultra light phase. You can put a light coat of Neat's Foot Oil on here, get it just a couple shades darker, get past that really super pale color, this is what you get. So this I've only had for like a couple weeks. I have not carried it that much because well, with all the stuff going on, I haven't left the house much and needed to carry my wallet because we're pretty much staying in the house as much as possible these days. I just put a light coat of Neat's Foot Oil. I set it in my windowsill for a day because sun is another thing that also darkens up leather. It's kind of weird in a way actually that it still tans, right? Just like your skin does in the sun. I mean, it is skin after all. So that's a thing. I'm not gonna artificially darken it any more than it already is. I just wanted to get that little bit in there and then I, I want the rest of the patina process to be natural through wear and tear. I'm really looking forward to uh, seeing this guy in about six, eight months and how it's come along. Anyway, supposed to be talking about these wallets and I went off on a leather tangent for 10 minutes. <laughs> the Hubei and the Topsider, really awesome wallets really been digging them since I got them. Even though I spoke about them in my EDC update, I wanted them to have their own dedicated video. So if somebody wanted uh, some information on these wallets, they could find the video and not have to go through my 30 minute EDC update to get a quick glance at these guys. Michael was cool enough to give me a discount code 
discount code SIRES at checkout and you will get 10% off your purchase. As always, I will link all the details, the Dasafenomir website and the discount code and stuff down below so you guys can find all the details if you're interested in checking these bad boys out. That's all she wrote today, ladies and gents. Just wanted to jump on here and show you two of my new favorite wallets. I hope you guys enjoyed this one and got some good information out of it. If you did, feel free to smash that like button. That always helps us out. If you're not a subscriber, please consider doing so. We'd love to have you on board. I hope all you guys are having a fantastic week and we will see you in the next video. It is kind of creepy just to sit here and watch somebody sniff leather, right? <laughs> oh, by the way, not only subscribe to here, but go subscribe to Whiskey Knife Fight, our new channel. Me and my buddy Taylor from Best Damn DC started a podcast uh, and a YouTube channel, Whiskey Knife Fight, where we're live streaming and then we're going to put the live streams on as a podcast on the podcasting platforms. We did our first live stream this past week, so definitely go check it out. We're going to talk about wallets and whiskey and knives and cigars and, you know, just general guy stuff, general tomfoolery. It'll be a good time. So, Subscribe here and go subscribe over at Whiskey Knife Fight. I sit here and frequently sniff like. Don't make it weird. Ah. <sighs>